Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck and I've been getting a lot of requests to update my blue-black reanimator deck from a while back and I've also gotten some requests to try and build a deck around Thassa and Atris. So why not combine both of them and build this blue-black uh, Enter the Battlefield reanimator deck featuring of course a late game of Thassa plus Agent of Treachery which is a very powerful combo of course that often leads to the opponent conceding on the spot as otherwise we get to steal one of their permanents turn after turn which is very hard to deal with. So we've got a lot of creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities to combo with Thassa, including Thassa's Oracle itself, which also adds two blue devotion to turn Thassa into a creature, which is great. And then of course the ETB effect from the Oracle is quite useful at helping us assemble the combo of reanimating an Agent of Treachery as quickly as possible. Now by including the Thassa's Oracle, we do need a lot of blue mana early on, so we do need to make some compromises with the mana base and what uh, spells we include in the deck. So we don't have any double black spells in the deck, so we have enough room for all these islands so we can cast our oracle consistently on turn two but that also means that we don't have enough uh, black mana to cast cards like ritual of soot or cry of the carnarium which would be effective uh, measures against aggressive decks so we're pretty soft to amber cleave uh, aggro decks so we're probably not beating those but our deck is otherwise pretty consistent at uh, assembling the agent plus thassa combo which beats a lot of the more mid-rangey and slower decks so let's take a look at our entire deck list here. At one mana, we've got the full playset of Murfolk Secret Keeper, which we can adventure first, milling the top four cards of our library into our graveyard. And then afterwards, we can play a one mana 0-4, which can help us block, adds a bit of devotion for Thassa, and we can also sacrifice it to the Blood for Bones and not feel too bad about it. Then at two mana, we've got our Thassa's Oracle, which is great. And in a late game, we could also run into a situation where we end up drawing our entire deck, as we also have a lot of self-mill effects. And then the alternate win condition from Thassa's Oracle could also come up. And then we have the full playset of Meyer Triton as a 2 mana 2 1 with Death Touch. When it enters the battlefield, puts the top two cards of our library into our graveyard, and we gain two life. So another nice enter the battlefield ability that helps us put more stuff in the graveyard to hopefully find an agent of treachery that we can reanimate with a Blood for Bones or Conive Concocts. And then we've got our Tomebound Lich as another staple of these reanimator decks as a 3 mana 1 3 Death Touch lifelink that when it enters the battlefield or deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card and then discard a card. So, useful way of discarding Agent of Treachery if it's stuck in our hand so we can reanimate it a few turns ahead of schedule. Then we've got the full playset of Thassa Deep Dwelling, despite it being legendary. Can always discard additional copies to the Tomebound Lich, but it's such a powerful effect combined with a lot of our creatures that we want to maximize the chances of uh, finding one. And then we also have four copies of Atris, which is pretty sweet with Thassa as it provides a very good Enter the Battlefield ability, stapled onto a 3 2 Manus creature that can also attack and block. Because when Atris enters the battlefield, target opponent has to look at the top three cards of our library and separate them into a face down pile and a face up pile. And then one of them we can choose and put into our hand, the rest goes into our graveyard. So even if an agent of treachery somehow ends up in a pile that ends up in the graveyard, it's still good for us since we can then reanimate it. And Atris just helps us put more stuff in the graveyard and provide a bit of card advantage as well. And then we get to our reanimation cards, since the plan is usually to reanimate Agent of Treachery instead of hard casting it. So we've got the four copies of Blood for Bones that needs an additional sacrifice in order to cast it. But we've got plenty of expendable creatures that we don't mind sacrificing. And then we get to return a creature from the graveyard to the battlefield and another creature from our graveyard to our hand, so that's even more card advantage. And what we can even do is if we have Agent of Treachery already in play, we can sacrifice the Agent to the Blood for Bones and then return it with the Blood for Bones itself to essentially re-trigger the Agent's ETB effect, which can also be quite useful. And then we've got Connive Concoct. We're not going to cast Connive a whole lot, but every now and then we might gain control of target creature with power two or less. But we want to cast Concoct to Surveil 3 and then return a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, which will often get back Agent of Treachery, or if we already have Agent of Treachery, we can maybe reanimate Thassa to uh, keep stealing the opponent's stuff. And then we've got our four copies of Agent of Treachery, which is the centerpiece of the deck that we're going to try and reanimate as soon as possible. And when the Agent enters the battlefield, we gain control of target permanent, so it can even steal the opponent's lands, which is often what we'll start with, making it more difficult for them to get back into the game. And we can eventually just start hardcasting 
Rising Agent of Treachery 2, and at the beginning of our end step, if we happen to control three or more permanents we don't own, we also get to draw three cards, which used to be a bit of a drawback, since we could end up uh, decking ourselves with that ability, but now with the addition of Thassa's Oracle, we can potentially turn it into a win condition as well, as long as we're careful with how we trigger the Thassa trigger and the Agent of Treachery trigger on our end step. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems okay. Facing a turn 1 actual innkeeper. Smill myself and hope to mill over an agent. And then we can use Oracle to prioritize the reanimation spell. Blast Zone into Lucky Clover. There is Agents. I think I still take the Agent, that way if I find Lich I can reanimate it. Although I guess it is pretty convoluted here, because we don't have the Lich in hand. There's one in the graveyard. Maybe I'm better off taking nothing and hoping to find another Agent later. And for now finding a Lich or an Atris could be better. Nah, I'll still take the Agents. And then for now, just play Secret Keeper and another Oracle. And then Thassa will be a creature as soon as we play it. So that's one of the advantages of this heavy blue mana base. And then what do I want? Atris would be okay to go with Thassa. Don't need another Agent. Yeah, I'll take an Atris. So turn 4, probably play Thassa. Turn 5, Atris, and then I'll take it from there. Alright, opponents milling themselves with a Secret Keeper, maybe to try and escape an Uro. And yeah, there it is. So just a blue-green adventure deck. They're out of lands, and yeah, the Blast Zone is not doing them any favors with this Uro. Don't have an agent in the graveyard, so I could take the Lich to put it there. Our opponent's probably playing Brazen Borrowers, which are pretty effective at bouncing Thassa, which is pretty expensive to replay. Temple of Mystery, so we won't see Uro this turn. Keeps a card on top. They could play the Secret Keeper to draw. And another Secret Keeper to mill 8. So they're going pretty deep into their library as well. So the Secret Keeper can chump Thassa most likely. So, I think I just go for Lich, Discard Agent, and a Flicker Oracle to try and find a reanimation spell for next turn. So for now we can attack. And 
discard agents. Plenty of blue devotion. So we get to dig pretty deep for Blood for Bones or Knife Concocts. And yeah, there it is. Now my opponent could also mill me with the Secret Keeper, which is an interesting interaction in this matchup if they have another one. Worst case is probably still like a Brazen Borwer bouncing Thassa. Not too scared of Uro. This can be a Fay of Wishes for sideboard cards, alright. And copied by the Lucky Clover, so they could get a way to deal with uh, Thassa for one mana. Or maybe a Graft Digger Skage, so I can't reanimate agents. So that's actually pretty effective here. Yep, there's the Mystic Repeal. Although Cage would be a bit of a nombo with their Uro, so maybe they don't even have it in the sideboard. And they once and future. Right, so they probably get rid of Thassa. Oh, never mind. It's going to be a Secret Keeper first. And then put Thassa on the bottom. Still get to reanimate Agents, which is quite good. And what do we steal? I'm torn between stealing the Lucky Clover and just stealing a land. Alright, can keep another Blood for Bones on top. Which should be a fine draw next turn. Get back Agents. I think I'm just stealing a land. There's no Thassas in the graveyard, so can't get a Thassa back from the graveyard, but can play Atris and then Blood for Bones and maybe we'll have milled a Thassa. Uro escapes. Did find a Fable Passage. I'm pretty likely to be given a land with Atris. I think I Atris first and then play Blood for Bones, hopefully. Alright, I guess I'll take the two pile. And there's a land. Sack Agents. And then we'll get back Agents and probably the Thassa's Oracle to dig towards another Thassa, perhaps. Could be another land, could be the Uro. I guess Uro is not bad. And it also lets me attack. How close am I to winning with the Thassa's Oracle here? Still pretty far. 37 cards. Do I need a Secret Keeper? Not sure what's better here between Temple and Secret Keeper. I'll keep the Secret Keeper. It's one more Devotion. Another Fay of Wishes. So they get to wish for a lot of cards. Unsummons, pretty decent on Uro. And Disdainful Stroke, sure. And then they could play the Fae of Wishes too here if they wanted to, or they can keep up Stroke. They decide to keep up Stroke. How many cards does my opponent have? 25. Wondering if I should start milling them. Probably not worth it. 
start with playing Oracle, so that if the Lich draws, I get to draw into whatever I keep on top. And then I could play the Secret Keepers to increase my devotion, or I could mill myself. I think I'm gonna probably hold on to the Secret Keepers for now. Just play the Oracle. And then another Thassa. Could be pretty good. Another Conife Concoct doesn't do much. Can potentially cast an agent, but they do have that disdainful stroke. Probably just keep the Thassa. And then I don't have to cast it this turn. Force them to keep up uh, stroke. And attack. They'll use the unsummon on Uro. But then the Lich could draw into Thassa. And her opponent's also just taking a lot of damage. Draw into Thassa, discard Secret Keeper. And I think I just pass. So her opponent wasted two mana when they're already behind. Gonna start with Uro. And they might escape it. And then hopefully they won't have this Dainful Stroke up anymore. Mm, they drew an untapped land, that makes this a lot more difficult. Another Tomebound Lich. So Lich and Atris can probably both attack. Is it worth it to send in everyone? It might be. If they block Agent, I no longer have the combo of Agent plus uh, Thassa. But that's okay. They're gonna double block Atris. Kill the Innkeeper. And then we'll discard a land. Play a Lich. And Atris isn't bad. So play Atris, which gets disdainful stroked. And the next turn I can maybe resolve Thassa. And the Lich on defense can block Uro if needed. And just using Thassa to tap down a blocker could also make the difference. So yeah, close and interesting game. This looks like a once and future. Gets back the Stainful Stroke and Lovestruck Beast, which can make two chum blockers. Another Uro. But they don't have the Sainful Stroke mana, which might be the final nail in the coffin once uh, Thassa resolves. And they went for the attack with Uro, hoping to draw into a land, but didn't get there. Think I block? Let's see, do I have lethal if I don't? Play Thassa, can tap one blocker down. Still wouldn't have lethal, so let's just trade. Another agent too. Let's just play Thassa.
and then 29, so not quite enough to win with Oracle. And what do we steal? I think it might be the Lucky Clover now. Or it could just be a land once again. Let's go for Clover. It limits how much they can do if they find like a Beanstalk Giant. Or another Lovestruck Beast to make chum blockers. And then we're currently at two of their permanents, so we can soon draw cards with Agent of Treachery. Uro escapes. Opponent back up to eight. Yeah, I mean, if they were able to disable stroke the Thassa here, this game would have looked a lot different, and we could have ended up uh, in a pretty bad spot. The game's not over yet, but it's looking pretty good for us now. Desperation Grow Spiral. But now I could just double activate Thassa and attack for lethal. Which is probably what I'm gonna do. And our opponent sees the writing on the wall and packs it in. Well, that was a good game of magic, lots of back and forth. And our opponent was very close to stabilizing and taking over the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, what looks like a fine hand. Turn to play the Triton. And then maybe missing a way to reanimate a creature. Lich is good too. No agents in the graveyard yet. But we can play a nice value game with Atris and Thassa. Turn to Transcendent Envoys, so some sort of aura deck. Could be tough. Let's get in for two and then probably still play the Lich. Well, there's blood for bones. Um, what do I keep? If my game plan is not reanimating Agent of Treachery, then maybe I don't need the blood for bones as much. Just play Atris plus Thassa, which is pretty good too, and digs me towards another reanimation spell later. Yeah, I guess I can buy that. So they are green-white. And the turn 3 Citizen Champion. It's pretty scary too. I will be able to play one of my fours on curve at least. So I'll just send the Lich, keep the Triton on defense. And then I think I just play Atris. And I wouldn't mind an extra land for next turn. Knife Concord goes to the graveyard, makes sense. But uh, Thassa is soon gonna turn into a creature as well. Which I guess doesn't matter too much if they're gonna go all in on the Envoy. Can also use the activated ability perhaps. Maybe deciding if they want to keep up uh, Karmetra's Blessing or if they're gonna tap out. It's gonna be a glaring Aegis. Alright, it's a lot of damage. Do I want to chump? Don't want to, but I might have to. Take 8, down to 12. Nah, I'll, I'll take the damage. And 
this turn we'll play Secret Keeper plus Thassa, which is still one shy of turning Thassa into a creature, but I get to flicker Atris again and hopefully set up an agent for next turn. A Lich can attack first. And I guess so can Atris if we're gonna flicker it. But this is gonna block plus maybe Karmatra's Blessing here. Yep, that's fine. And then the Secret Keeper is fine to chump. If needed. Card we're most terrified of, probably like an all that glitters on the Envoy could represent a lot of damage. Three, four, five, yeah, just go with the uh, unknown cards, not a Lich. The Blessing. Trades for the Triton. And yeah, there's all that glitters. So I can chump, take nine. Another Mire Triton. So now what's the plan? Can tap down the Envoy with uh, Thassa, but it's not the best play ever. Also very close to turning Thassa into a creature, but I guess jumping champion's okay still. Although I'm probably not going to get another turn if they have any interaction to save the Envoy or give it a champion trample. So this is the card I want, although is there an agent in the graveyard? I don't think there is. So it would be a bit of a Hail Mary, but might still be worth it. And then Atris attacks. And I probably want to upkeep, tap the Envoy, before they get a chance to maybe top deck another Karmetra's Blessing. All right, so I guess it works out. Agent goes to the graveyard. We take the Conive Concoct. Upkeep tab the Envoy. The other unknown card also happened to be another Conive Concoct, which is pretty funny. So we will get Agent in play next turn, but yeah, now we're dead on board because Alsate can give champion protection from blue which means we can block it. And that's game over. All right. Yeah, this seems like a pretty tough matchup since they can often operate on very little mana. So stealing a land with agent is not necessarily game over, even if it happens turn four. And with all the protection between the Alsade and the Kermitra's Blessing, it's pretty difficult to steal one of their creatures. So don't expect to win this game very often. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Lich can discard the second Thassa. And then we'll be looking for maybe ways of reanimating creatures, maybe just land so we can curve out. Doesn't look like we're going to be reanimating agents very quickly with this hand, but we can still play a fine mid-range game as well. Well, there's agents, so that uh, changes things quite a bit. So now the Oracle wants to find like a Blood for Bones to get this agent back in play as soon as possible. So submit zero. Next turn play Lich discarding agents. Facing some sort of uh, four color control deck maybe.
and there's a blood for bones all right so we could reanimate agent next turn already taking a land which will mess with the opponent's mana quite a bit Gets a mountain. Ooh, Vraska. Alright. Now I won't be able to. Blood for Bones. But I can just set up Thassa. I guess if I play Thassa, I won't have land 5 to go play Secret Keeper and then Blood for Bones. So it's a bit of a risk. So maybe I'm better off just uh, playing Oracle, playing Secret Keeper, have two creatures in play to set up the Blood for Bones. Or we can shoot for the moon and just play Thassa, hope to draw land next turn, doesn't matter which one. And then I can play one mana Secret Keeper, sank into the Blood for Bones, steal two things, and that's probably game over. Yeah. I'll protect you. And hope there's no Elspeth Conquer's death. Opponent could also be on a Niv Mizzet deck. And yep, there's Niv Mizzet. Finds a Casualties of War, which could destroy my lands. Although, they might be unable to cast it. And yeah, there's a land, so that works out. Get back Agents. Get back Lich. And... Can steal Vraska, which blows up Teferi. And then the other one probably wants to steal a land. So let's take the Temple of Malady so they can maybe not uh, cast her black removal. It's going to be a gross spiral, hoping for maybe a swamp. It's going to be a temple of mystery instead. And a tapped black sorcerer temple of deceit, so they can't oath of Kaya the agents. And yeah, opponent concedes. It's very hard to beat uh, this board state if you're not very far ahead already. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, so I get to mill myself quite a bit with the Secret Keepers and the Triton, and then Thassa plus Triton mills even more. Don't have a way to reanimate anything, and no source of card advantage. So it's not a great hand, but I'll try. At least I'm just uh, Thassa's Oracle away from turning this into a creature, which is also not irrelevant. Alright, Agent in the Graveyard, that's where we want him. Turn to Bronzeide Lion. Uh, I guess we'll play Triton for now. They could make it indestructible, but if they spend two mana doing it, I guess we're happy. And yeah, Blood for Bones is perfect, so play Secret Keeper, play Triton. And next turn we can get back an Agent, and then Thassa is gonna seal the deal. Probably just gonna steal their lands. Also have to watch out for a potential Trostani from the opponent, uh, which could get back all their creatures I steal. And then probably just put an agent in hand, and yeah, our opponent sees a writing on the wall. Agent's pretty hard to beat uh, when played this early, and then we even had the Thassa as backup. So not the most uh, casual-friendly card to play, but so it goes. 
On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand looks pretty decent. Can cast our spells and then we'll get to see a lot of cards to maybe set up uh, some powerful plays. Not sure yet if I'm gonna play the Oracle or the Triton on two. Turn one Alsate of Life's Bounty. Don't often see it paired with uh, Sacred Foundry. Aha, so this might be a Boros Feather deck. Oh, there's Agent, so can discard it to the Lich. So I could go on the lookout for a way to reanimate the Agent as soon as possible, or I could play Triton, which is a slightly better blocker. I'll go for the Oracle. And I don't think I keep any of these. I really need to find like a Blood for Bones and Land 4. So I'll just submit 0. All that glitters a Legionnaire. It's gonna hurt. But the Lich is a Death Touch blocker, which forces them to use the Alsade. Discard Agents. So it might not be a Boros Feather deck if they're playing all these enchantments. Could just be kind of a Boros Aura deck. Keeping the Lich could maybe help me find land 4, but making them spend mana saving the Legionnaire is also pretty good. Especially when Triton's another Death Touch blocker next turn, potentially. Opponent has to pass, there's land 4. So now I can go for Thassa. I guess I'll attack for one. And then Blood for Bones would probably be the best draw. No Blood for Bones, do I want land 5? I think I just submit 0 to give myself the chance of finding Blood for Bones and then next turn I can still go Triton plus Oracle or just play Atris. End of turn Sentinel's Mark, okay. If I get the chance I'll definitely consider Chum blocking. Does mean a top deck Blood for Bones can no longer be played the way I want to, but uh, got plenty more chum blockers coming up. So Triton before Oracle. And then don't want any of these. And the second Oracle will also turn Thassa into a Creature, which is nice. And there's a Blood for Bones, which I will now take. And then we'll have Agent plus Thassa, which is pretty hard to beat. Could attack first, probably not worth it. So let's Blood for Bones. Agent also provides enough devotion for Thassa to turn into a creature, for what it's worth. And then we'll grab... I guess another Triton's fine. And then they might have a way of protecting the Legionnaires, so I think I'm just going after their lands.
Sentinel's Eyes, alright. Could make a case that I should have sacked Oracle instead of the Triton to have a black creature in play in case of protection, making the Legionnaire unblockable and killing me out of nowhere. But that was going to be difficult with them on 2 or 3 mana. Alright, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.